One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for another episode of Treeb Talks AAF. And ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday. You know what that means. Today is AAF Power Rankings Day, and ladies and gentlemen, some of your favorite teams took a huge jump forward, and unfortunately, some of your teams also took a big step back, and some, you know, they just maintained, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let you know who those teams are right now. This is Treep Talks, week number three, AAF Power Rankings. Coming in at number eight and sticking in last place, unfortunately, is the Atlanta Legends. The Atlanta Legends went out there and lost to this iron defense. And in every game they're in, it seems like the Legends will have a chance early in the game. And just late in the game, they just make terrible coaching decisions uh, on the offensive side of the ball that prevent them from winning this game. Or just mistakes overall on the offensive side of the ball. I think this Legends defense is not necessarily that bad. I think it's proved through three weeks that it could compete and it could hang in there. Uh, with the best of them. I think week two and three were good examples. Of course, week one, they got absolutely slaughtered, but week two and three, I think, were good examples for this Legends team. Now, Matt Sims did fuck around and threw for 328 yards, but you're probably thinking, dang, that's impressive. A good bounce back week for Matt Sims. Unfortunately, he also threw one touchdown and three interceptions. He was also the leading rusher, and his rushing yards were not impressive whatsoever. He only ran for 27 yards. And that is not a lot, ladies and gentlemen. It's not even for a quarterback. It's 27 yards. A lot. This iron defense was preventing the Legends from running the ball. And they were also preventing them from passing the ball. Also, because they were just shut down. Interception, interception, interception. Three interceptions off of Matt Sims. I don't see why they don't just fuck around and give Aaron Murray a shot. I heard that the whole crowd was chanting for Aaron Murray to get in there. I don't know why Matt Sims is protected the way he is, like he's some legend. But he definitely is not, pun intended, on the legend thing too, by the way. He is bad. His decision making is bad. He's holding the team back with his ability to not throw the ball and his ability to not not turn the ball over. You know, he's going out there. He's probably the worst starting quarterback in the league right now. And unfortunately, that is why the Atlanta Legends fall in at number eight on Treep Talk's Power Rankings. And falling down one spot to number seven, I have the Memphis Express. But ladies and gentlemen, trust me, trust me, trust me, the Express are on the rise. And let me tell you why. Because of one man, Zach Mettenberger. And y'all, y'all in the comment section, when I first started making these videos, were like, Zach Mettenberger's trash. He's third string. He's not going to be good. Blah, 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 blah. This guy came in there and changed the whole game for the Memphis Express. This guy should have been the starter from the fucking get-go. This guy is exciting. I know what his record was in the NFL, but this is not the NFL, clearly. You see guys that have succeeded in this league that definitely wouldn't succeed in the NFL. Guys like Garrett Gilbert. He wasn't very successful during his time in the NFL, but he is bar none the best quarterback in the AAF. And that is exactly what Zach Mettenberger has to offer. Mettenberger came in in the fourth quarter through for 120 yards. To put that in perspective, Christian Hackenberg played three quarters and had 88 passing yards. That's the quarterback that Mike Singletary went with. That's the guy. Christian Hackenberg, a guy who hasn't started an NFL game his whole career over Zach Mettenberger. Mike Singletary, you were a silly, silly boy. You're one of those guys in my five players and coaches that can revitalize their career in the AAF. Mike Singletary was on that list, but right now he's going down a downhill slope coming in at 0-3. But rolling with Zach Mettenberger and the fact that they played probably the three toughest teams straight out the gate could be a really good momentum uh, builder going forward because he's going to be your quarterback. You already know what he can do, and he should be starting next week, and it should be exciting. Sherman Batty led in rushing yards with 59. Zach Stacey uh, right behind him with 29, not a 100-yard game like he had last week, uh, unfortunately. Devin Lucen led in receiving yards with 51. Uh, Davis Toll got a sack, and he led in tackles with four. 
The stats, throwing stats, 8 for 14 for 88 yards and two interceptions for Christian Hackenberg. Zach Menberger took over, went 9 for 12, 75% completion, 120 yards, two touchdowns. Now then after that, the defense kind of let him down. The Express did have some opportunities to win this game, unfortunately. The uh, iron offense really stepped up. I mean, the Apollos, excuse me, the Apollos, not the iron, the Apollos. The Apollos really stepped up in this game and uh, played well offensively to just drive down the field, to continue driving down the field and making sure that the Express did not have an opportunity uh, to win this game. So with that being said, I think it's fair to rank the Express where I ranked them. And if I said the Iron in this clip, I don't think I did, but I might have because I have a weird feeling I met the Apollos. So don't you be roasting me in the comments section. So number seven, the Memphis Express, who falls one place. Coming in at number six in the biggest fall, I have the San Antonio Commanders, a team that fell to the Philip Nelson-led San Diego Fleet. The Commanders are a team I'm a kind of a fan of. I like to root for them. And Logan Woodside, unfortunately, a guy that I have stood up for in the past, had a really really bad uh, go out there against the fleet. He really struggled. Uh, didn't look good on the road against the uh, fleet, a team that they already played and already beat. Um, so they definitely had an opportunity to win this game again, but unfortunately couldn't get done. Trey Williams led in rushing yards with 75. My guy, Mikhail McKay, who I swear to you is going to be a stud in the NFL one day, especially after going off in the AAF like he has, had 91 receiving yards. The second closest guy to him was Greg Ward Jr. with 24. Author Mar Miley got a sack. Devontae Busby got an interception. Joel Lanning led in tackles with six. So, Woodside, he went 12 for 23, that's 52%, two interceptions, one touchdown, and Marquise Williams came into the game, went 100%, 21 yards, zero interceptions, and zero touchdowns. Now, this isn't like the Zach Mettenberger thing, I don't think this should be a permanent switch. I think he did have a rough week this week, did Logan Woodside, but I think he's still your quarterback, and I think he still has the chance to go out there and win you games, especially with the targets that he has down the field with guys like Mikhail McKay, and he also has a really solid uh, run game as well. I think this was just a uh, unfortunate bump in the road for this organization and this team, but I think that this isn't something that they can't bounce back from. And I think Logan Woodside is the guy that they should stick with at the quarterback position because, you know, switching back and forth, back and forth, that's not going to help your uh, team very much. you got to pick one guy and stick to it, and I think that uh, their guy should be Logan Woodside, and they should trust with him and trust the process, and hopefully this commander team gets better, and hopefully Logan Woodside improves alongside. Coming in at number five, one of the biggest jumps on the list, we have the Salt Lake Stallions, who went from seven to five, and fortunately for them, won their first game of the season in their first home game, their home opener in Salt Lake, Utah, which looked really, really chilly, and I can relate because this Idaho weather has not been very forgiving for your boy either, but it was cool to see these guys win, especially uh, playing the Arizona Hot Shots, who last week were number two on my power rankings. Stay tuned to see where they rank this week, but the Hot Shots looked like they struggled traveling to a team that is significantly, significantly colder weather, and they struggled out there. And this offense of the Salt Lake Stallions did enough uh, to win this game. A lot of controlled possessions. That's what a time of possession. That's what Dennis Erickson seems to really be focused on um, here in this league. Uh, they didn't kick, cut their kicker, which I was really surprised about. He actually missed a field goal in this game as well, which looked like maybe that would be another turning point in this game. But uh, good for the Stallions. It was not. Josh Woodrum came back this week. Threw 178 yards. Joel Boganen had 45 yards. Brandon Oliver added 40. Demontre Pearson L had 90 yards receiving with Luke Curzola getting a sack. Uh, Mike Purcell getting a sack. And Carter Schultz, who continues to impress, also got a sack of his own. Greer Martini got an interception and led the team in tackles with seven. So the overall passing stats for Josh Woodrum, he went 22 for 31, that's 71% completion, 178 yards, zero interceptions, one touchdown. The true definition of a game manager, just control the clock, make sure you go down the field, don't make any mistakes, and he did not make any mistakes, didn't throw any interceptions, completed 75% of his passes, almost got over 200 yards. It's not necessarily impressive, but for what the offense that Dennis Erickson is trying to run here, 
and gets it done. Um, Bogonan again, 12 carries, 45 yards, which was the leader with a 3.8 yard average. Like I said, nothing really blowing you away stat wise, except for maybe Pearson L, who did have a big uh, reception where he got a lot of his yards from, uh, the from a lot of his 90 yards from on one big reception. And, you know, the run game, like I said, wasn't necessarily impressive, but the game plan that Dennis Erickson did put together is one that is very old school. Get yourself a game manager at quarterback. Make sure you control the clock. Make sure you end up getting that victory. And it worked against this Arizona Hotshots team, who they did fall to week one in Arizona. Uh, this team traveled to Salt Lake and fell to the Stallions, so the record is 1-1. One and one. And with a 1-2 and two Stallions team who has a victory over the Arizona Hotshots, they probably have the most leverage out of any 1-2 and two team in the league right now. Coming in at number 4, I have the San Diego Fleet. The Fleet rise one position in my power rankings. Philip Nelson really stepped up in this game, showing why he is the starter for this quarterback through thick and thin. He threw 193 yards in the victory, the 31-11 to dominant victory over the commanders and a guy that i was really impressed with and i think everybody came away being impressed with uh one of the best running backs in this league jaquan gardner had 122 yards including one 90 yard touchdown run that he took to the house uh his running style reminds me a lot of maurice jones drew a speedy guy that's also kind of a bowling ball it can bounce off your tackles and if you don't wrap him up good luck getting him to the ground he'll run right through the most obvious of arm tackles and he wasn't the only one killing it uh, in the run game Terrell Watson he notched over 73 yards rushing so almost 200 yards rushing for this fleet team with 193 passing yards his offense was clicking on all cylinders Nelson Spruce led in receiving yards with 50 uh, Andrew Selter got a sack with Shikari Soto, who had a sack last week, got another sack this week. Uh, two interceptions, Jordan Martin got one, and A.J. Tarpley as well. Uh, Kendall James led in tackles with five. Phil Nelson's overall throwing stats, 68 completion percentage, going 17 for 25. One interception, two touchdowns with 193 yards. Jaquan Gardner, 12 attempts, 122 yards. It's a 10.2 yard average with Terrell Williams going 13 for 73, which is a 5.6 yard average so the running game is working for the san diego fleet team and when philip nelson needs to air things out he does just that he has worked really hard to make sure this fleet team could get built off the ground as well as uh gardner as well this team looks like a team to be reckoned with down the uh down the road here in the uh western conference and it should be interesting to see how this fleet team develops coming in at number three i have the arizona hot shots the hot shots obviously falling from two to three uh their quarterback john wolford who i've also spoken openly about that i think is terrific and has a bright future in this league unfortunately got injured so trevor knight had to come in uh wolford pitched in 127 yards through the air with trevor knight pitching in 35 the run game was not as effective this week uh for the arizona hot shots which is you know seems like a common trend for the salt lake stallions their uh run defense has been Really stout all season long. Jarrell Presley was a leader with 34 yards. Rashad Ross, the receiving leader with 51, who has been their number one wide receiver uh, all season long. Edmund Robinson got a sack. There's no interceptions. So overall, John Wolfer went 14 for 22, which is 63 completion percentage, 127 yards, one interception, one touchdown. When Trevor Knight came in, he went 8 for 17. That's an ugly 47 completion percentage, 95 yards, zero touchdown zero interceptions so hopefully Wolford does get better soon because he is a pivotal part to this hot shots offense and maybe if he was in there the whole entire game maybe this game would have been different but hopefully a fast recovery for him and hopefully he can get right back there on the field to improve this hot shots team because they desperately desperately needed them Trevor Knight like lost out there the Salt Lake defense is also really stout I would put them probably the second best defense in this league uh behind the iron of course um you know, they played a tremendous game, had a good game plan coming in, uh, really relying on the defense and the stout run game. That's Dennis Erickson's motive. It's like the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars, 2000s Ravens, etc. Basically, any team that has a really good defense uh, really relies on that strategy. And unfortunately, that strategy for the Arizona Hotshots worked against them. So now they're 2-1 and one 
with a loss to the uh, Salt Lake Stallions, which kind of hurts them in the long run uh, when we get towards playoff hopes and uh, to see where their record lies with the Stallions after them having a, a one and one record against each other. We will see how that uh, develops. So hopefully, again, John Wolford uh, gets it, gets better, gets uh, healthy, and this hotshot team can bounce back. Coming in at number two, we have the Birmingham Iron. Now, the Iron's defense is tremendous. They allowed the Legends only 12 points in this game. Um, that is saying a lot, obviously, but, you know, they do have Matt Sims at quarterback. You can say whatever you want, but this Iron defense is definitely the absolute truth. A lot of teams have allowed over 60 points combined in their three uh, games between 60 to 40 points. The Iron have only allowed a total of... 22, 21 points. They've allowed 21 points throughout three weeks. This defense has been incredibly stout. Unfortunately, though, if they're going to want to make a deep uh, playoff run and hopefully make it to the championship and make it out alive, this offense is going to have to step up. I guarantee it. Uh, Luis Perez, I know he has a tremendous backstory, but he has been struggling. He had a really good week one, but then after that, he's been steadily, steadily declining. He only threw 160 yards. Trent Richardson, another guy that really looked uh, good on the offensive ball, offensive side of the ball early uh, for this Iron team. Only at 46 yards. I know exactly what you're going to say. He had three touchdowns, but 46 yards. I mean, you know, he's reliable in the red zone, which is a good thing to have in a running back. But definitely no stats that are going to uh, really help your team or really uh, help you as a player overall change my opinion that you are necessarily a good running back even though you had three touchdowns the only thing that really that works for is people that own you in fantasy football by the way if you are doing aaf fantasy football tell me how your team's doing in the comment section down below i'm really curious uh quinn Patton, who's been their solid number one wide receiver all season long led with 58 yards devin taylor got a sack casey sales got a sack jeremy falk also got a sack uh the three interceptions mac red max redfield got an interception jack tocho got an interception jamar summers as well Ben Quez Brown led with 10 tackles, and that might be an AAF record. Uh, Elijah Campbell came right behind him with five. Luis Perez, like I said, 17 for 31, which is 51, 54 percent completion, uh, 160 yards, one interception, zero touchdowns. So you know that's e. Like Luis Perez really needs to step his game up if this Iron team offensively is going to be able to compete. You know, I know that their defense is playing at an elite level, but this offense, you know, is a team that, you know, you would really, really like to see improve again. Trent Richardson with the uh, three rushing touchdowns for this Iron team. They come in at number two uh, because I think their offense needs to improve, but their defense is elite. However, this team that's ranked number one, has a mixture of eliteness on the offense and defensive side of the ball. And still, your number one team, the AAF, your 3-0 Orlando Apollos. That game uh, plan that Steve Spurrier had towards the end of the game when the Express looked like they were going to be coming back with Zach Mettenberger coming back in the game. You know, all those designed runs for Garrett Gilbert to keep it and them just gaining yards after yards, first downs after first downs. That's what good teams do and they held it down defensively as well this is the best team in the AAF by far because they are balanced on both sides of the ball for example Garrett Gilbert he threw 207 yards the leading MVP candidate uh, in the AAF uh, so far Mr. Ernest Johnson led in rushing yards with 79 with Devon Smith with 52 Garrett Gilbert added 43 so again two solid running backs with Garrett Gilbert that's over 100 yards uh, combined rushing Randall Hall led in receiving with 68, with Charles Johnson with 53, Scott Orndoff, my boy, with 41, Earl Okine with one sack, Andrew Arncraw with a sack as well, uh, Keith Razor got an interception, Terrence Garvin with another interception, Andrew Arncraw <laughs> led in tackles with five, Garrett Gilbert's overall throwing stats, he went 14 for 28, that's 50%, 270 yards, zero interceptions, and a touchdown to Ernst Johnson, 13 carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown to 6.1 yard average. No one right now is playing better than the Apollos on both sides of the ball. You know, usually all these other seven teams either have a really solid offense and a sketchy defense or a really solid defense and a sketchy offense. This is a team that puts it together uh, from both sides of the field to compete and uh, to complete a altogether overall dominant powerhouse and no one has done that yet in the AAF but the Apollos have and they have really asserted themselves as the leader of the pack in the championship 
favorite as of right now, at least in my opinion. No team right now has a complete team like the Apollos do. And if they have it this early, imagine what they're just going to do when this chemistry builds and builds once we get to about week 10 and we get to about championship time. You guys should be worried about the Apollos taking it all right now. And you guys should be fixing your team and making sure that you have a complete offense and defense of your own. Now, like I always do, I like to update you guys on uh, everybody that has entered through YouTube that is in the Troop Talks AAF Power Rankings and where you rank. And ladies and gentlemen, we are down to only one guy from YouTube that is competing, but he's doing extremely well. This guy was the only one that went undefeated this week out of the 25 participants that are in this challenge, and he skyrocketed all the way to number three overall. He went nine and three. Uh, and he is in third place behind uh, another 9-3 and three fellow, Tanner Nielsen. Uh, the only problem was, was Amp 850, you did bust on your total points. It was 40 total points, and you said 41. So you're off by one, man. That just prevented you from being in second place. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and check the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you're feeling those so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Tree Talks. Also, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. It's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, you guys have a great day.